Today we will be studying about the lymphatic drainage of breast. Before that, it is important to note the extent and the quadrants of the breast. The breast extends from the second rib, this is the second rib, to the sixth rib vertically and horizontally it extends from the lateral border of the sternum, this is the lateral border of the sternum, to the mid axillary line. Now let's talk about the quadrants of the breast. The breast has total four quadrants, the upper medial, the upper lateral, the lower lateral and the lower medial. The upper lateral quadrant has the axillary tail of spens. Before starting the lymphatic drainage of the breast, it is important to note the lymph nodes and the lymphatic vessels of the breast. The lymph nodes are axillary lymph nodes which also contain the apical, central, anterior, posterior and lateral lymph nodes. Here in the figure we can see all of them. These are the apical lymph nodes, central, lateral, anterior and posterior. Secondly, anterior thoracic lymph nodes. These are the anterior thoracic lymph nodes and they are adjacent to the anterior thoracic vessels. Next, posterior intercostal nodes and other nodes such as supraclavicular, cephalic, subdiaphragmatic, subperitoneal lymph plexus. Here in the figure we can also see supraclavicular lymph nodes. Now let's talk about the lymphatic vessels of the breast. The superior lymphatic vessels drain the skin of the breast but they do not drain the areola and the nipple. The deep lymphatic vessels drain the parenchyma of the breast along with the nipple and the areola. The lymph plexus that lies deep to the areola is called the subareolar plexus of sapi. It drains into the anterior axillary nodes. Now let's understand the drainage of lymph from the breast. As we know that the breast is divided into four quadrants. The upper medial, upper lateral, lower lateral and lower medial. Now the lateral The lateral quadrants, that is the upper lateral and the lower lateral, drain into the anterior group of the axillary nodes. The two medial quadrants, that is the upper medial quadrant and the lower medial quadrant, drains into the internal mammary lymph nodes. These are the internal mammary lymph nodes. The lower lateral quadrant drains into the posterior intercostal lymph nodes. These are the posterior intercostal lymph nodes. A few lymph vessels from the lower medial quadrant pierce the anterior abdominal wall and drain into the subperitoneal lymph plexus. This is the subperitoneal lymph plexus. Now the lymph from the anterior axillary nodes drains into the central group of axillary lymph nodes. These are the central group of axillary lymph nodes. From the central axillary lymph nodes, the lymph drains into the deltopectoral nodes. These are the deltopectoral nodes. Now, from the deltopectoral lymph nodes, the lymph goes to the apical lymph nodes. These are the apical lymph nodes. And from the apical lymph nodes, the lymph finally drains into the supraclavicular lymph nodes. These are the supraclavicular lymph nodes. Now let's talk about the clinical anatomy of breast. So first most frequent site of carcinoma is upper lateral quadrant of breast and first lymph nodes draining tumor bearing area is called sentinel lymph nodes. Now third point is that infiltration 
of lactiferous duct infiltration of this lactiferous duct causes fibrosis and can cause retraction of the nipple now the fourth point as we know that superficial lymph vessels drain the skin of the breast and in any case if there is obstruction by cancer cells it causes edema and give rise to an appearance like that of skin of an orange which is called pew day orange now the fifth point cancer arises from epithelial cells of lactiferous duct now the sixth point there is a ligament called suspensory ligament which anchors the skin which anchors the skin and gland to pectoral fascia now in any case if there is infiltration of this ligament it causes retraction of skin which is an important sign for breast cancer now next point is about metastasis of breast cancer to other organs now first of all because of the communication of lymph vessels cancer may spread to other breast and other organs now in organs it can be liver or brain or ovary etc now let's talk about metastasis of breast cancer to brain so basically cancer cells from breast will reach posterior intercostal veins from there it will go to vertebral venous plexus and it reaches vertebral body now from vertebral venous plexus it reaches to intracranial dural venous sinuses and finally it reaches to brain now next point cancer of breast is most frequently seen in post menopausal women why is that it is due to lack of estrogen it is due to lack of estrogen 
Now let's talk about different diagnostic method for breast cancer in brief. First technique is FNAC which is very safe and very quick which stands for fine needle aspiration cytology. And second is mammogram. which reveals any cancerous mass in breast. As you can see here, this is the cancerous mass in breast. Now let's talk about surgical procedure for removal of breast cancer. So first is mastectomy. which is removal of one or both breast partially or completely and the second one is lumpectomy which is removal of tumor only Now third is radical mastectomy. It is a treatment for advanced breast cancer. In which there is surgical procedure involving the removal of breast underlying pectoral muscle. and lymph nodes of axilla. So this is the whole clinical anatomy of breast.